suppose a child makes baskets. She even made the chair she's sitting on. Papyrus grown on the banks of the nearby Mara River, along with its water, are the raw materials for her business. But that's not all the river provides for the people of Mara Sabora village. During the dry season, the Mara River is the only source of water, so we use it for drinking, bathing and washing clothes. The Mara River in northwestern Tanzania is a lifeline for local villagers. They have to travel almost three kilometers to collect fresh water. People here only use a small amount of water for their homes, livelihoods and animals. But populations upstream are growing, polluting the river and putting pressure on the water supply. If the pollution continues and isn't prevented, the Mara River will dry up. And if it dries up, it won't only affect Mara Zibora, but also those living further upriver. They are the ones polluting the water. But it's us at the lower end who are mainly affected. Suppose a Charles's village chief and chair of the Water Users Association in the village. The organization was set up to conserve and protect the village water resources. But there's only so much they can do. Charles thinks the government needs to do more. John Satuma is a coordinator for a project working with the government to do just that. He's come to Mara Sabora to find out how much water people use and how the river has changed over time. He and his team want to make sure there's enough water for people living all along the river. They want to boost biodiversity too. We also require water for environmental flow. Basically the minimum amount of water that should be left within the river to flow downstream and take care of both the the animals and the vegetation within the, the river basin. The Mara River project is funded by the International Climate Initiative and implemented by the Nile Basin Initiative. The social survey is just one element. This farmer is looking to expand his field of crops. To do that, he needs to be able to access water more easily. But that could cause problems in the river. Fertilizers and herbicides from agriculture are among the pollutants that sully the water. The people are farming up to the river banks, and by that, you know, they cause soil erosion, which gets into the water channel and goes all the way down to Lake Victoria, and also reducing the depth and uh, the, the, the width of the channel of the river. The river's source is in Kenya's Mau Forest. From there, it flows over the border into Tanzania, through the Serengeti and into Lake Victoria. Deforestation and large-scale agriculture upstream damage and pollute the river, and that has an impact here. Scientists are collecting data to form a water allocation plan and facilitate a political agreement between the Kenyan and Tanzanian governments. They want to make sure people on both sides of the border have access to water and avoid any future conflict. The current health of the river is an important aspect of the project. The scientists examine water quantity, pH balance, temperature and other factors. We measure these parameters because if we find they're outside of the correct range, then we know there's pollution in the river. And that is something that would affect all the life in the river, as well as other users, like us human beings. Today, the water pH is normal. But water levels, both in the wet and dry seasons, have fallen over the years, which could be a problem if that trend continues. A problem also for these water users in the Serengeti. Here, the Mara River provides an essential source of water for animals, including more than a million wildebeest who migrate here every year. The migration brings in tourists, and with it, income for Tanzania. The Mara River Post Hotel does not use the river's water, but the river does give the hotel an advantage. 
I think uh, the hotel could not be here if the river could not be here as well, because uh, the river attracts a lot of games or animal. So it attracts a lot of clients, a lot, a lot of tourists to come here because of the animal. Making sure those animals get enough water on both the Kenyan and Tanzanian sides of the border. That's also an important part of the agreement that will be drawn up. They don't know the border, that uh, this is Tanzania and this is Kenya. And the migration, when they move from Serengeti, whereby it's found in Tanzania, they go into Kenya, uh, whereby it is a mass a Mara game reserve. So they, they always overlap the whole territory. So uh, we have really a very big task for the two countries to, to make sure that we preserve this river. Back in Mara Sabora, Saprosa Charles fears there could come a day when the water in the Mara River stops flowing. The Mara River is very important for me because, as you know, without water, there's no life. Only an agreement between Tanzania and Kenya will ensure there is a future for Saprosa Charles and for all the people and wildlife who rely on the river.